Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here, and today I've got a very special holiday tutorial. We're actually going to create a holiday wreath right here entirely inside Photoshop. Now, we're not going to do it entirely from scratch, but rather we're going to use pieces of other images to create this wreath. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually establish the shape of our wreath. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my rulers by pr pressing Command or Control R, and then go in here in the uh, rulers and just drag out a guide and drag it to the center of the document. It'll, it'll actually snap in the middle there when you hear it. So it'll just create that. And let's go ahead and create a vertical and horizontal crosshair there. It's actually, that one's not in the right place. Let's recreate that. So again, I'm just gonna grab, click inside the ruler and drag down and it will snap to the center point there. There we go. So this establishes the dead center of our image. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the elliptical marquee tool and go ahead and create a new blank layer. I'm just going to hold down my shift and option, this will be shift alt on windows, and just drag out from the center a large circle there. Not quite too close to the edge, but right about there. And I'm just gonna go into the edit menu and go to stroke, and just give this a very small, simple stroke in the center, black, okay. Just makes a line around that image. So go ahead and deselect, and now I'm gonna create a second um, circle. Again, by holding the shift option key down, clicking in the center and then dragging outward, and this is going to establish the area. Basically, I'm creating the shape of a donut here, but this is gonna establish the area of the wreath because we're gonna create a brush and we need to have the boundaries in which to color in when we create our wreaths. All right, so there's our basic shape. So what we're gonna do is to build the wreath out of the evergreen branches, we're actually gonna use an evergreen branch. Now here is a stock collection I got off Photolia, and it's just a random collection of these evergreen branches right here, and it's gonna work pretty well for what we want to do here. So the first thing is, um, it's gonna go ahead and take all the color out. Let's just go under image adjustments and choose desaturate. Now I'm gonna to boost the contrast up with a little bit of a levels adjustment, because the darker the area, the more opaque the brush is gonna be. So I'm just making that little bit of an adjustment there. You notice it's, getting, it's tightening up the contrast quite a bit there, there we go. Now the one I actually like that I wanna to use to create my brush is actually this one in the very end over here. But it's got a little bit of a cutoff down here in the bottom, so I'm just gonna kind of delete this little area right there. So let's fill that with white right now, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna take my lasso tool and just draw a very loose selection around this particular branch right here. Now again, I'm gonna make a little bit more of a levels adjustment, just boosting that contrast a little bit, making it a little bit darker. There we go. Now all I'm gonna do is go into the edit menu and go down here to define brush preset. Now it's gonna ignore all the white area around the branch because it'll make that transparent. So you can see it's just defining the branches itself. So we'll just call it evergreen. One. So my brush is now created. So we'll go ahead and just minimize this document back over to our working file here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new blank layer. And I'm gonna jump over here to the brush tool here in the toolbar. And let's just click on the brush menu and go and locate the brush we just created. Be at the very bottom of the list here. There it is right there. So there's my brush, and you can see it's the shape of the tree branch. It looks pretty good. But obviously we need to change some things about this brush before we go and start painting. So let's go and open up the brush options. And the first thing is the size. Let's go and bring the size down to around 200. Uh, maybe more like 250, there we go, let's just see, there we go. So that looks pretty good. We we'll go in here and activate shape dynamics and we're gonna turn off pen pressure for the size jitter, but I am gonna bring the size jitter up quite a bit to around 25%, so it kind of slightly randomizes the size a little bit of the branch. Then I'm gonna bring the angle jitter all the way up to 100% so it randomizes the angle as I paint. See, there you go like that, and you're already starting to see it, um, that effect take shape there. So now, onto the colors. Now, if I just choose a green color, if I wanted to paint this in a dark green, it's gonna paint and paint. Now, as the paint builds up, it's just eventually gonna turn into a solid shape, and that's not what I want. I wanna have some dimension here and variation of color. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm actually gonna use that color I just sampled. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around in my toolbar so the foreground, or the white is in the foreground. I'm actually gonna use this light green color here. So I have a light green color in the foreground and a darker green color in the background. And over here in the brush options, what I'm gonna do is actually activate shape, or color dynamics rather. And then in here in the 
foreground and background jitter. This is going to allow me to alternate between those two colors as I paint. So I'm going to start uh, by having that set at 25% and let's just start painting and see what we get. Ah, now we're looking pretty good. So you notice it's laying down varying colors of those branches and it's giving me some little bit of dimension in there. It's got some lighter areas and darker areas in the back. And I think I am uh, in fact going to increase the size of that brush just a little bit more. Let's go back into brush tip shape and let's bring it up to 275 perhaps. There, that looks pretty. Okay. All right, so the color um, elements are in place. The brush behavior looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and double check this. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and do the flip X and flip Y jitter just so it kind of uh, gives me a lot more variation there. I was going to check those options on as well. All right, so we're uh, again, we're on a new blank layer here in our image. I'm just going to start coloring around that donut area. It's kind of filling in as we go around, and this is going to create the shape of our wreath. Now I'm just going to go and just touch on some areas that might have the darker colors in the forefront a little too much. Let's just paint in these areas here. And once I have the basic shape in place, I can go and turn off my little guidelines there and actually turn off my guides. And there we can see that the real wreath is really starting to emerge, all with just one simple brush so far. So let's just add a few more elements here. You can see it's varying those colors and it's giving me something rather interesting there. Okay. I would obviously keep adding to this, but I'm not going to. So I'm actually gonna take my eraser tool and let's just get rid of some areas here that kind of overlapped or just kind of extended too far that I just wanna trim out a little bit inside that area. Okay, that looks good. So, oh, let's get this one up here. Oh, there we go. Place that with a different one. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna turn off my rulers there because I no longer need them for the moment. Now, what I want to do now is give this wreath some real dimension to it. I mean, it looks pretty good so far and actually has some uh, dimension to it, but I'm gonna add a little bit more to it. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make a duplicate of this image. Go under image, and go to duplicate. Make a completely new version of the file. Go to layer and choose flatten. So we're gonna flatten it down and then we're gonna go into the image menu to adjustments and choose HDR toning. Now here we're actually going to really pop the detail using HDR toning. Now the first thing is I'm gonna bring the saturation down to zero. And we're gonna bring the detail here all the way up to its max 100 or 300%. Now I'm gonna tweak that in the edge glow section here, despite I'm gonna first check on edge or smooth edges and then just tweak the slider here. Now don't go too crazy, because if you go too nuts, it's just gonna go too contrasting. What we want is to have as much detail in those branches as possible. So you can see how it's really starting to punch that out. And that looks pretty good. And about something like that. And about like that, okay. So I can play with that a little bit more, but I think I like what I'm getting there. Okay, so go ahead and click OK. So you can see it's really kind of uh, brought out a lot of the detail in the image there. So let's go ahead and drag this back over to our original document. So I'm just holding down the Shift key so I make sure it lands on the center. It should line up perfectly. I'm actually going to go ahead and create a clipping group by holding down my Option key and clicking between the layers. There we go. And let's just go into the Blend Mode menu here and choose, well, let's start with Overlay and see what we get. Aha! Look at that. It's really starting to punch that detail out and it looks pretty good. But let's see what some other blend modes might do and make it a little bit, you know, soft light's actually a little bit better. That's uh, not having as many of those harsh blown out colors there. It's not too bad. Multiply actually, that's not too bad either. That, multiply is actually looking more realistic than any of them. Actually, I like multiply and soft light. It's really a hard choice there. I think I'm gonna go with the multiply just so it's not uh, so bright on there. But already, look at that. You can see it's really starting to bring that dimension out in all those branches there. If I turn this, uh, the original, or if I turn this HDR toning layer off, you can see it's just a clump of colors there with no real uh, volume to them. But by adding that HDR toning layer, we're getting something much more realistic looking. Okay, pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and start decorating the wreath now real quick and let's start with I got a collection of other branches pine cones and things like that that I found also found of Hotolia so it's got this uh, one of this this Christmas ball over here let's go ahead and grab the lasso tool and just draw a very loose selection around that I'm gonna go ahead and snap to that selection by using the magic wand tool notice here I've got the tolerance set to 
10, which is pretty low. And if you hold in the Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, and put your cursor inside the selection in the white area here and click once, it's going to snap that area. It's basically removing that uh, white area of that selection. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now that with the object selected, let's just go and drag it on over to our layout. And it's very, very large, so let's actually scale it down a little bit here. There we go. And position it somewhere on our wreath, like right there. It looks good. Now, to make it kind of blend in with the wreath a little bit more, let's first go in the layer menu, go to, to the matting and choose defringe, and let's bring the defringing down and perhaps try move, removing the white mat here. That helps a little bit, but not too much. So here's a cool trick. When uh, something like that happens, you want to add, go ahead and just double click on the layer and add a layer style. In this case, we're going to add an inner glow and change it to this kind of, one of the, it's going to sample the dark green of the wreath there, and that looks pretty good. And then change the blend mode to multiply. Actually, no, let's change it to color burn and see what we get. No, linear burn, that's no, not too bad. But you see what it's doing. It's darkening around that ele uh, element, so it looks like it's uh, being in the shadows of the branches there, and that looks much better, so it's not so punching out as much right there. So that's a cool little trick there for using the um, layer styles. So we'll go ahead and click OK. So we have that one done with the layer style. So all I'm going to do is hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, and drag duplicates to different parts of the wreath. Let's just put one over here, one over here. I'm actually going to put a bow on the top in just a minute, so we'll just actually leave that one alone. So, And we can even vary the size of some of the, these just to, so it doesn't look completely consistent and then perhaps even give you the illusion that some are hanging closer to you in space than others. There, it looks good. A little bit like that. All right. So lastly, let's go ahead and just add our bow. I've already got my bow extracted here. It's a very large red bow, so let's just drag that on over. And again, just scale it down and position it up top, and voila. Here we have our Christmas wreath, pretty much made from scratch. So again, you can define brushes from practically anything. And if you're gonna create something that's made up of a branches like this, then go ahead and find the actual branch and define it and make uh, make your brush out of it and then create it that way. So here's just, just remember that HDR toning, that's the key here. That's what really kind of helps sell it. Now there it looks more of a graphical painterly type of wreath, but adding that HDR toning element really just gives it a uh, much more realistic de depth to it. So hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. Enjoy, play around with uh, some holiday tricks. By all means, share them and everyone have a good holiday. Take care.